What up y'all? I've been trying to make this video for a long time and today is finally the day. I've got two things that I'm trying to set up. One I don't have on my rig yet. This first one is a bass technique. It's called a double fluke rig. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but a lot of these bass guys use it. But I figured why wouldn't it work out here in the surf? So I've got two swim baits. You see these two right here? This, they're both rig Texas rig style. Um, this one's got like a quarter ounce bullet weight. And usually you don't even have any weight. You just let these, this flutter. So this is attached to my main line with the snap swivel, 20 pound fluorocarbon. And above that, I've got a swivel that's just sliding, just a swivel. And I attached another liter of 20 pound fluorocarbon. And I've got the exact same thing, a little fluke with a Texas rig, weedless style. And this one is about six inches shorter than the main line, if you can notice. So this, these will swim back and forth, flurry all around. And if you get into a little school of blues or blacks, it should be dynamite, man. Like all these blues, all these blacks, they school up in these coves. So this would be a perfect rig. And I'm going really light because I probably don't even have to get down all the way to the bottom. I could just fish it right where they are near the top, maybe halfway in the water column. Next up, got this seven and a half inch Kitek going for some big boys today. And then also, if I get to it, I've got a bobber and some bait. Never tried a bobber fishing or this double fluke rig. So I'm going to try to get a fish like this. And then we got four people out here. I'm out with Ahmad, his wife, David D. Rapp. So we're going to try to catch some, cook them up. I've got a grill, charcoal, Baja citrus, got tacos, taco shells. I got everything in two backpacks. So we're going to have a meal, a feast out here after we catch some fish. All right, first time using this, let's see how this thing swims out here. Ooh, that looks great. Letting it sink, letting it sink just a little bit. Not, doesn't even have to be all the way at the bottom. And then just a fast retrieve with a little twitch just to make that thing dance. All it is is just finding that school of fish. If we can find that school of blacks or blues, we should be able to get some. Pretty cool how it doesn't get tangled either with that swivel on top. It just slides around and stays separated. Yeah, nice. It looks kind of big. Where is it? Oh my god, yeah. That's nice. That might be... Is that a link hook? No, it's a cabazon. Oh, oh the one that's blue me. That's the cabazon, yeah. right? The one, yeah, this one has blue me too, actually. Might be close. Nice. Oh yeah. Good job. Oh, it's been pretty slow. I've caught one perch as a group total. One small cabazon too. But now I'm going to try something I've never tried before. So I've got this bobber stopper here. Putting it straight onto my braided line. And I'm cutting these tag ends right up against it because I don't want anything to snag against the eyes of my rod. Now this is my bobber. This is a salmon bobber. People use these at Pacific Pier. People go shore fishing for salmon with this. They'll cast this out and this will be their indicator. So it's got a snap swivel on top. I don't think I've ever seen it used like this, but I'm going to slide that snap swivel onto the main line. You know what? I had to retie. So let me just show you how it looks after I rig up everything. I switched out from using these string bobber stoppers. Now I'm using these rubber ones. So if you're a fisherman, you know about those. The only reason why I don't like to use those, especially if your bobber stopper is way up on the main line, is because it gets snagged when you cast. It gets caught up in the eyes of your rod when you cast. So I got that rubber bobber stopper up here on my main line, and I can move that around. Down here, I've got my bead, and then I've got my bobber. So when this is in the water, it should be going up like that, and that'll indicate to me when I have a fish. I also got another bead to stop it from sliding back down. Then a snap swivel to a 30 pound fluorocarbon. And then kind of like a huge split shot when you go freshwater fishing. I've got another bobber stopper here to stop the weight. And then I've got this hook swinging freely. So I'm going to put a piece of squid on here, cast out. And uh, my estimation is that it's about 15 feet deep. So I'm going to rig this up maybe 13 feet deep from this bobber stopper and just wait and watch the bobber, watch it go down, watch it move around. Maybe it'll go swimming around like a little harpoon to bluefin tuna or something. A little piece of squid right there. All right, let's see how this thing works. See if I can even cast it out. I'm not even going to try to cast out far. 
Boom. All right. There's the bobber. Do y'all see it? Now we wait. That, that worked pretty well, actually. Cast it out just fine. It's almost the same as bait fishing, as if you were to just throw your bait out and wait and watch your rod tip for a bite. But this way, you don't even risk getting snagged at all. There's no snags. So you're only allowed one rod for rock fishing, but I don't know what I'm gonna catch. I haven't caught anything yet. For all I know, a perch might bite on my uh, squid and bobber rig. So I might catch a perch on this rig too. So I'm fishing two rods right now. All right, bobber's over there, letting it soak. Still have no fish yet. I'm just going back to what I know. Swim bait, one ounce, jig head, Kitek. Confident I'll catch something now. Any bites out there? Nope. No. That's odd. Hey, my bob, my bobber's under. Huh? My bobber's under right now. <laughs> my bobber is going down. Let's go get one over here. No, there was a fish on there. It was biting it, that's for sure. Damn, look at that. Lost him. Hey, David. Toss me a piece of squid. Thank you. Damn. All right, let's try that again. Just double, triple hook it. I'm gonna stick around here. You know, my bait wasn't played with all day. It was still looking fresh every time I brought it in. This time it was half gone. Bobber was going down. Yeah, I think the thing to do when you're fishing with a bobber like this, stay near your rod. New spot now, uh, had no luck earlier, but I'm still determined to catch one fish or two or three on that double fluke rig and that bobber rig. David's behind me. I don't know if you can see him or not, but he's got a Kitek and a trailer on top. I've got same thing except no trailer. I've got a one ounce jig head. It looks really, really deep here. The water is a beautiful dark emerald blue color. So the only thing I'm doing with this is testing the depth. I almost don't even want to catch one. I almost don't even want to catch a fish like this, but I just might because never fished this area before. Looks super deep and probably like not very much pressure here at all. But all I'm really trying to do is find the depth so I can, when I tie that bobber rig on, I know how to set my uh, bobber stopper. But I've got a feeling I'm about to catch one right now. Your legs are all sunburned. Oh, I got a fish. I got a bite. Yep. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, something's following on my, my swim bait. Yep. Oh. The... It's been following it for a long time. How do you know? A couple bites here. Oh, there he is. Got, oh. You saw that? Damn, he's right here too. Shallow, close to shore. He was right here. Here he comes. Let's let's see if I can get him now. There he is. Nope. Yep. Got him. There he is. There he is. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's something. You see him? Oh, that's a nice ling, dude. Wait for this wave to bring him up. Oh, that's not a keeper, I don't think, but it's a nice fish. Let's wait for this wave to bring him up right here. Yeah, might be a keeper actually. Oh, that's a keeps. You think so? Oh yeah. That's yeah, dude. What a color on that thing. Twenty-two. Second cask. Get a nice silhouette of that fish right there. You're right, dude. What? Right on the on the dot at twenty-two. Twenty-two, I think. I'll let him go. Yeah. Man, how much do I want to keep this fish? Man, I really want to keep this fish, but he's 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 right there, right on the money. It's been a while since I caught one, so I'm gonna 
put him back in the water. Oh, he's got some of those sea lice in him. Let's see if I can get a close-up of that for you. Can you see in there? Can you see that? Isn't that kind of freaky? Those lice live in there. They live inside the gills. But anyway, man, while the bite is still on fire, it's really hard to switch to the bobber. Anyway, I'll talk some more after I release him. Gonna put him back. Well, that fish bit the tail off my Kitek. So, man, it's really tempting to keep throwing this. And I think the temptation is enough for me to keep throwing it. Oh, David just missed one. Oh, oh man, dilemma right here. What do I do? Do I do the double fluke or do I do the bobber? I don't want to fish bait, so I'm not going to do the bobber right now. And I'm just going to throw on another, another Kitek and just fish a straight swim bait. I actually want to catch one, man. I, yeah. Yeah, I just I just got to do it man. Even though I just want to keep on fishing. I've got a small fray in my braid So the correct thing to do with this situation is cut your line and retie this time got the black Kitek Similar to the green pumpkin black and green pumpkin my all-time favorites. All right Here's a little trick for you guys you fish fellow fishermen So I've got my leader here usually when I tie my my swivel to my braid I do the Palomar knot, but now I don't know, I could do the Palomar knot, but then I would have to weave the whole leader over. So I'm just doing a clinch knot, but let me show you a little trick. So clinch knot, wrap it around. Since it's braid, I can do a little bit more twists. I'm gonna do six or seven twists. And now the improved clinch knot, you know, you, you put it through the hole and then you wrap it back around and then you're supposed to put it back through the loop, right? So you put your tag end through the loop, but then instead of just tightening it up just like that, you put the tag in through the loop again and then do it again three times or even four times and that'll extra, give you extra strength on your knot. That way, if you can't tie the Palomar, this is another quick, easy knot you can tie that'll have extra strength and this is how it looks when it's done. Um, you probably can't see it, but anyway, it looks pretty good. Take my word for it so deep out here 30 feet maybe 40 feet maybe there's even a chance we can catch a vermilion out here so i cast out my bale is wide open just letting it sink straight down instead of closing the bale and letting it swing towards me as it sinks so right after you cast it out you know how you let it sink and sink and sink and sink that's when you find the bottom then you can start your retrieve then you know the general area you're near the bottom if not on the bottom and then reel it in for another five ten seconds and then let it sink again, and then you know, find out where you're at again. Dude, I bet these fish have never seen a swim bait before. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You saw that, he's on one. That's probably like 18 and a half. Yeah. Nice though. Nice. Hell yeah. Get off the trailer. Yeah, the trailer. The green pumpkin, I love that color. That's what I got bit on too. Dude, don't you just love that, that thump? Just that boom. Like that distinct bite. Oh, yeah. Pop. Yeah, exactly. I wonder where the school of blacks and blues are. I want to throw that double fluke rig, but it's, it's so hard to switch from this to that rig or the bobber when this is working. I know. Dude, I bet even right here. Oh, yeah. There's something there. Yep, got, oh, damn it. I'm gonna go over there and get this fish. Oh, I just got my tail bit off. What does that mean I should do? It means I should go catch him. He bit the tail off of my Kitek. I can't let him do that with, and get away with it. What do you, who's he think I am? You think you can just do that to me? Just come take my swim bait tail like that? I don't think so. Oh, you got one, dude. Hell yeah, you got one. Yeah, you got one on there right now. Okay, David just caught a 27 incher. He's gonna let him go. There'll be more fish in here, we hope. I'm getting bit all up in here right here. Are you? Hurry it up then. I got one right now. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Littleling. I knew there was one here though. I got him. 
There he is. Nice, nice link cod. Not blue, but hey, now I, I get that monkey off my back. I knew there was one here. I got him. So let's put him back and try to get a bigger one. There's so much action on those seven inchers. Oh, David with a huge one. Woo, baby. Oh, that's the same one, dude. That's the same one. That's the same one. That's a 27 inch. That's the same one. <laughs> David just caught this fish, same fish twice. Let's go check this out. This, this is the same fish. Hell yeah, same color, same mouth. Same fish twice in a row. I, I'm almost positive, dude. You right where you release him. Let's see if he's 27 inches. Yeah. 27. <laughs> yeah. That's the same one. That's funny, dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you think? Should I let him go again? So the question is, should we release him or should we keep him and make some tacos? I'm leaning more towards keeping him this time. I mean, he just showed us that he wants to be kept. He knows what that swim bait is. He saw it twice and he got caught once, but it's totally David's call, so. Yeah, he hit that thing, he hit it like 10 feet away from shore. I saw you set the hook and everything. He did, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you make the call. I think it's fate. I think it's, it's a male. It's fate, it's, it's male, fate. this is what he's I saying. I mean, I caught him twice in 10 minutes. I don't think you guys can hear him, so I'm gonna translate word for word as he says it. Yeah, I think, yeah, uh, I, think, uh, I, think I think it's uh, going to be a dinner, bro. Look at this swim bait, too. Two ounce jig head, right? Se seven incher? Yeah. It took two ounces, took eight seconds to hit bottom. So it's super deep out there. The deeper, the better, always. The action on these big swim baits is just ridiculous. Those tails just whip around like that, cause so much vibration in the water. I'm sure the lateral line of all these fish are there like, what the hell is that? I've been messing around with all this side stuff, but now let's get deep. Let's get far out here. Let's see if we can pull one in from, from the depths. Might get splashed, but that's the risk we gotta take. You know, honestly, I can't even say that it's hit bottom yet. Oh yeah, baby! It feels like a good one. He was swimming right towards me for a second. Yeah, wow, that's a big kelp reeling. Wow! Oh my god, whoa! Wow. I've never seen a I've never seen one that big either. Dude. Oh my god. I love Greenling too. We're gonna keep this. Oh man. Non stop here. Non stop action. Every, every what? Six, seven minutes we catch a fish? 15. Oh, that's it. Oh, what the hell? It looked so much. Better. Not bad though. I guess we just, I usually just never see him that big. Really. Yeah, he, like, yeah, you usually see him like 10. 10 to 12 is the average. Man, that thing is fat. That thing is a monster cup greenling. Keeping that one, baby. Next up. Fish tacos, baby. So, in the last video that David and I did, I caught a kelp greenling and it had worms in it. So we're gonna see if this one has worms. But man, look at this. Oh gosh, such a, such a, such a beautiful pattern. Get the sun shining in on it. Such a nice clean fish too. Sorry, took your thunder, dude. Oh, that looks like a good one. I think this is a ling. It's shaking its head. I cast it. I cast it this one a little bit differently, just more to the right. It's bigger than the last one. It's fight. It's fighting harder, but it's probably not a keeper. Another one, kelp greenling. That's crazy, Another dude. Another fatty kelp greenling. If I didn't dispatch the other one earlier, you'd think this was the exact same one. Look at that fat kelp greenling, man. 15, exactly 15 the same. Half, 15. Yep, looks exactly That's the same as the last brother. one. Yep, identical twins live together man, for a long two time. Fat greenlings like that, back to back. I'm gonna release him. We've got enough meat for a long, long time. Wait for this swell to come back up. 
And I'll just do it like this. See you later. I still can barely believe the size of this fish. It's pretty early still, 447. We're not going to eat yet. We're probably going to eat about 7 o'clock. But I want to give this thing a good amount of time to marinate. So I've got a special little recipe that I'm going to do today. So first thing, got my cutting board. Slapper on there. So this is my salmon knife actually. I got this for salmon this season. It's got a spoon on the back so you can scrape that bloodline out. Extremely, extremely sharp. It's going to start with a small incision right behind the fin. And while David isn't here, let's find out if there's any worms in this thing. No signs of worms yet. By the way, I don't think I'll be eating any more sandworms. Uh-oh. What do you know? Oh, man. Well, that's not, you don't like to see that. So everybody's squeamish about these worms. Maybe it's a good idea to stay out of kelp greenling. Two out of two kelp greenling that I found. Looks like they're wormy. That's not very cool, huh? Oh, there's another one. There's another one. Yo, but honestly, ask anyone who works at a sushi restaurant or any fish market who, who cuts these up fish up for you, they're gonna tell you that fish have worms. It's just normal. So as long as they're cooked properly all the way, they're not gonna give you any harm. All right, I'm gonna save that for crab bait later in the season. Now I can actually look straight through that and I don't see any other worms. So, I mean, all in all, it's a pretty clean fish. Now for all of you that have trouble skinning a fish for whatever reason, like, I don't know, if you've seen my salmon video, I've had a problem, but there's these pin bones that run along pretty much the middle of the meat. If you can cut and focus your energy, focus your cut right along where those pin bones are, because those pin bones are attached to the skin, then you'll get a good, clean skinning every single time, just like that. Skin is off. It's one taco for me, and this one's for David. Okay, I'm gonna go give these rinse off, and then I got the marinade right here. David on another one. No, like, like we got a color swim bait, I like that. <laughs> hey, are you all right with some worms? So if you all remember when I caught that sturgeon, or when Stilo helped me, this is what he recommended, that Baja citrus. So we're gonna dump that into the Ziploc bag, and it only says marinate for 20 minutes, but we're gonna marinate for about an hour and a half. Three for three right here. It is another kelp greenling, dude. They love this blue. Three for three kelp greenling on that blue Kitek. So this thing is, is awesome. Like I was showing David, this top comes off and you put the charcoal in here. You got a flat surface. There's our grill in the back with the charcoal. Lighting up this pan and throwing a little butter. And that's just to do these taco shells just like I like it. Corn tortilla, a little butter or oil, crisp them up nicely. Don't think that'll take too long. I'll put a little cheese on there, okay? Oh, yeah. Is that four cheese Mexi mix? <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Four cheese Mexican style. <laughs> How many you want? Four? <laughs> <laughs> Just something simple, crispy corn tortilla, fish, cheese, guac. Some four cheese, Mexi blend. These corn tortillas are, are, are going to be crucial, I know it. Look how crispy they are. Look at that, that's like out of a taqueria, bro. Oh man, give me another bite. Mmm, mmm, yeah. The cheese and the, <laughs> oh man. The cheese and the fish mixture is off the hook. Dude, that seasoning is mental. A dollar. Grill mate seasoning, guys. What a day, bro. Yeah, man. What a day, oh man. Good God. That's what it is. Some grill mates. I think corn 
is the way to oh, go. Oh man, I'm not. I'm buying nothing but corn tortillas next time I make tacos. Some Baja this is straight Citrus. gringo recipe too. <laughs> the craft four cheese, <laughs> the craft four cheese Mexican, the mission tortillas. Yep. Gringo recipe all the way. Oh, and you can't forget the store bought guacamole. That's what we're using. So yeah, you know, originally I wanted to try the double fluke rig and the bobber, but once these fish started biting, it was too hard to go back to those. So maybe next time, I'll try that again in the future. Well, I thought I was going to end the video yesterday with that catch and cook, but we're out here again. We were originally planning to dive this morning, but the water got all murkied up. So instead, I've got the water wolf on me and I've got a new inspiration to throw out that bobber rig. So I'm gonna tie up the uh, bobber with the water wolf and then I'm also going to use a jig head with the little swim bait on the bottom of the bobber and then I can actually cast the bobber out and then slowly swim it back without even touching the bottom. Hopefully these lingcod or whatever are looking up for something to eat. All right, there's a lot of stuff on this line to throw out. Hopefully it works. Let's give it a shot. Camera's recording. All right, there goes the swim bait and the bobber rig down to the bottom of the ocean. And like I said, it's about 20 feet. So I set that bobber stopper at 18 feet. And luckily, I guessed just about approximately right because you can see that swim bait stops about a foot or two from the bottom of the ocean floor. All those snags, all those rocks. Now, it looks like I'm jigging it from the top, but I'm not doing anything at all. These this movement is from the waves it's the wave action making that swim bait go up and down so if there were any fish out here i can almost guarantee they would bite on the swim bait i think next time i'm going to do the exact same thing i'll throw on probably the same jig head a one ounce jig head but next time i'll throw on a five or a 5.8 inch kai tech which has just a ton of action a ton of tail action and I can literally just cast out and let the bobber work it like this in between the cracks, in between the rocks. The current is gonna do a slow movement and it's gonna work a area very effectively. So this is just a little teaser of what's to come. <clears throat> but I'm pretty impressed with the action on the swim bait with this bobber rig. Look forward to another video like this coming up soon. Salmon season just opened up. Got a Oru kayak tandem video out in the ocean coming up soon too. So thanks for the support. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this long video. Hope it didn't drag on too long. I'll be back out here with another video within a week. Peace, y'all.